Saints is my favorite song. It happens to be Pastor's favorite song. I love it so much. How deep the Father's love for us. I cannot give an answer. 
answer I cannot give it But this I know with all my heart Oh, that his wounds has paid Yes, it's paid it Oh, why should I gain? Why should I gain from his reward? Oh, no, I cannot I will not give an answer Oh, but this I know has paid it, on the cost is paid it, yeah. why should I gain from his reward, oh I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, that his wounds his wounds has paid it. He had his wounds showing in his hand and on his feet and on the crown. His wounds has paid it. I know with all my heart that his wounds has paid my ransom. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, say to your neighbor, the Lord is faithful. Oh, if God is faithful, you say it with more conviction. The Lord is faithful. We have Minister Caleb worshiping with us today. Let's put our hands together for him. Amen. And also... Um, worshiping with us for the coming uh, four weeks is Richard, Pastor Richard Skinner, the senior minister for Brixton Baptist Church. He's coming amongst us as a friend and uh, as a colleague and um, also uh, to undertake a placement. And I pray that whilst he's here with us, we will encourage him, make TBC become a home for him and uh, let him know that he's amongst friends. Amen. Amen. Richard, give everybody, stand up and give them a wave of friend, let them see you. Amen. So, if you see Richard, he's one of us. Amen. Amen. Kindly turn with me in your Bibles to John's Gospel, chapter 16. John's Gospel, chapter 16. Jesus is about to offer his life as a ransom to his church and talking to his disciples. They found some of the things that he was saying very difficult to comprehend. And the, Jesus encourages them in this chapter, ensuring them that he's saying these words to them so that in the midst of their challenges, they will not stumble. Then in the seventh verse, he continues and says, Never the liars, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. 
For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Amen. Amen. Father, we honor you for the richness of your word. We thank you that your word is life to those that find it. We pray that this afternoon, in the name of Jesus, you will cause the entrance of your word into our hearts to illuminate our understanding. Draw us closer to you. For our desire is to be drawn closer to you. We love you with all our hearts and with all our souls. In simplicity, may I share your word this afternoon. In the name of Jesus and God's people shall say, Amen. This afternoon, I want to share with us a very interesting topic. Paying attention to your family or marriage dashboard warnings. Wow. The rate at which Christian marriages are breaking down in this generation is alarming. And I believe that the time has come for the church of the living God to rise up and to understand and also to know that not only are we the salt and the light in our generation, but that we might also know that if there is any institution that is closer to the heart of God, it is the family. That marriage before God is holy. The sanctity of marriage must hold. And this afternoon, I want to share some things with you from the depths of my heart. I believe that for every one of us in this room have sat in a car before. And for that matter, if we do not own a car, we have seen the dashboard of a car. Hallelujah. Every car has a dashboard. And the truth about dashboards is that they have many signals which alert us of how well our car is performing. Dashboards represent the easiest way a vehicle talks back to its driver, allowing him or her to stay up to date with the status of the car and provide the driver with prior notice of potential mechanical problems. No driver will enjoy the full benefit of their car if they fail to act on the warnings that pop up on the dashboard. These tiny lights tracking the operation of the car provide critical information that could protect you as a driver, the passenger, other drivers, and for that matter, all those who are on the road. The truth also is that every marriage has a dashboard. And failure to adhere to the signals does not only affect the couple, but those that are connected to the marriage and worse off the children. Too many people unfortunately ignore the signal on their dashboards when it is yellow. And for many, before they become aware, it is red. And unfortunately for many, it becomes too late, the car stops. No marriage ever ended up in divorce without the signals alerting the couple. Many people are driving today and have not, they have not even bothered to repair the malfunction showing on their dashboard. So they are just allowing time. They are just moving till one day everything packs up. And for those that are married and are hearing my voice in the room today, and for those that are hearing me on the net and also by television, the question I want to ask you, what is the health of your marriage? If you've been married from only yesterday or for that matter 60 years, what is the health of your marriage? 
And as I stand before you daily, I have to ask and myself the question, what is the health of my marriage? I remember the day Anizan packed up in the center of the road at Peckham. I had ignored all the signals on the dashboard. <laughs> I had driven Pastor Eastwood to go to preach at CCBC, uh, one of our churches. And we were coming back at that time. This was somewhere, I think, no, it's 91, at Chasworth. Then just on the road, uh, just around Peckham, the car just, pshh. I, I don't think I saw any sign on the dashboard. I didn't see any warning, but the car just began to smoke. I remember Pastor Isu jumping out of the car and saying, Pastor Kingsley, I'm not ready to die. <laughs> In short, we had to go in a mini cab and, and quickly come to church so that he would not miss his preaching time. But the truth is that occasionally, no matter how good your car is, it can pack up. But with this Nizan Sunny, you remember Nizan Sunny those days? It was, it, it was a caravan. I remember very well that the car was crying to go to servicing but the owner would not listen so what are some of the signals on the marriage and the family dashboard you see in the wisdom of god he has given to us his holy spirit who helps us not only to read signals popping up in the marriage and family but also how to arrive safely at our desired destination that is, till Christ comes back to take us into glory with him, or till after we are 100 and we go into glory. I pray this day, may the Lord protect your marriage. May the Lord make your marriage a living testimony. And for those who are contemplating to enter into marriage, those that are courting and all those that are praying to get married, my prayer is that may you look at the dashboard of your relationship. In the previous weeks, we have been talking about the Holy Spirit. We looked at the person and nature of the Holy Spirit. We also looked at the symbols and titles of the Holy Spirit. Then last Sunday, we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit in the world, in the church, and also in the life of the believer. God willing, from next Sunday, we will be looking at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But today, I'm sharing with us the signals, the warning signals that comes on the dashboard of your marriage. The first signal I would want to talk about is the oil signal. When this light comes up on your car, it indicates low oil levels. And as a driver, what you have to do is to top it up or know that it is time to change the oil. Because driving with insufficient oil can cause serious damage to your car's engine. Oil must be changed very often to ensure smooth running of the car. A car if you desire that car to function well, must be well serviced and the oil must be checked each morning because of possible leaks. This day may I ask you, is your marriage leaking? Is your marriage leaking joy? Is affection leaking in your marriage? Is respect leaking in your marriage? It's understanding leaking in your marriage. The truth about oil is that oil is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. And every marriage needs a refreshing of the Holy Spirit each morning. And this comes as you and I go on our knees in prayer. 
Psalm 92 verse 10, the Bible says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. May the Lord every morning anoint your marriage and family with fresh oil in Jesus' name. Oil lubricates the engine for smooth function, else that engine will cease. I've observed over the years that any time I become agitated, pretty, uh, uh, and taking unnecessary, unnecessary things too serious, uh, the moments when in the morning I did not have quality time in the presence of the Lord. When your prayer life is not strong, things that are minute are magnified by the enemy. I pray that each morning you will check your prayer life in the name of Jesus. You see, the Bible says we must be filled with the Spirit and not with one. Each morning you must go on your knees and pray for your marriage. The Lord, this morning, fill my marriage with joy. Fill my marriage with peace. Fill my marriage with understanding. May it happen to you in the name of Jesus. Your marriage must be built on the foundation of Christ. And you do this daily with prayer and also through the study of the word. It is only the Lord who has grace to lubricate your marriage each day. In the midst of the pervertedness that is in our land and in the world today, in an age where the sanctity of marriage is being challenged, I pray that your marriage will become a living testimony in your time in the name of Jesus. It is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that forgiveness becomes easier. It is when you have gone before the Lord in a quality time of prayer that petty things become petty to you. How is your oil level today? Is your dashboard giving you a signal of yellow or red? Do you have to top your prayer? Do you have to top your oil up? Do you have to top your prayer up? Is something leaking in the marriage badly? I pray that you will stand tall in prayer in the name of Jesus. The second thing I want to talk about is a speedometer. The speedometer in a car tells you how fast you are traveling. And the question I want to ask is how fast are you running your marriage? Are you running your family into depths? Or are you trying to keep up with your friends and with your neighbors, the Joneses. Today, it is buy now and pay later. Buy now, no credit for the next six, six months. But the truth is that whether you buy now, whether interest or not, you will pay. And don't spend money that you don't have. The truth about life is that you are... <coughs> You are not in competition with anybody. The fact that somebody is driving the latest car does not mean you must go and pester your bank manager. And if your bank manager will not give you the loan, you go to one of these cutthroat money lenders just to take money or go and buy a car on a higher purchase that you can't afford just because you want people to know you are there. You are not in competition with anybody. How fast are you traveling with your marriage? Are you taking your wife along with you? Are you taking your husband along with you? Are you taking the children along with you? First Timothy 6 says, the Bible says that, but godliness with contentment is great gain. The secret is contentment. Many marriages are suffering because of unnecessary borrowing to keep up with things that most of the time are not necessary. Because you visited somebody and they, had, they have bought the latest furniture, that doesn't mean you must go back and change your furniture. You don't know the means by which somebody lives. Hmm. 
there was a guy who was always driving these limos. One day, when the fullness of time came, not only did the, uh, uh, the bailiffs come, to, to, and, and when he tried to play macho, they called the police. And they brought these trucks and carried the three cars away. So if you were competing with these people, don't take your children to schools you can't afford to pay. The fact that your neighbor's children are all in private school does not mean that you must also force yourself and take your children to private school. Are you with me? What you and your child can always do is that you can bring your child, encourage your child, train your child for that child to enter into a good grammar school or a good school. You see, life is not a race, but life is a test. Life is not about who has what most. Life is not about who can display the massive amount of wealth and pomposity. Life is about whose life Christ shines most. May Jesus shine through your marriage in the name of Jesus. It's not about who shines most. It's Christ shining through your marriage. May that be your Lord in the name of Jesus. The third signal on your dashboard is a lie. Every dashboard has a built-in lighting mechanism besides the light that gives direction in the night. You know that the moment you ignite your car and you switch on your light, in the day there is a built-in mechanism that causes you to be able to read the signals on your dashboard. That is, it comes on naturally. And in the night, when you switch on your lights, it even lightens it up the better. Light communicates all the other gadgets and the other functions to you in your car. It helps you see all the gadgets in the car. It allows transparency. What allows couples to know the pains, joys, struggles, and challenges of each other is the art of communication. Beauty says it is good to talk. And I agree with them, it is good to talk. Now, one of the telephone providers is even uh, called Talk Talk. It is good to talk and talk again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The essence of communication is that it helps you to connect well and catch up with each other. Cars, almost every car has high and dim lights. In the light of communication, is the light of communication dimmed in your relationship and family? Has your partner become cold? Is it because you are not communicating well or you are thinking your partner has become insensitive? Is one party giving only mono answers to the questions you are asking? And when you brought a third person in to find out what is wrong with your spouse, was her answer, the Bible says, my yes must be yes, and my no must be no. So you see your wife, how are you today, darling? I'm fine. You sure? Yes. When the moment that starts to happen in the house, it is a signal on your dashboard, and you must pay heed. The truth about women is that they are always telling the men we don't listen. And we, the men, are telling them they don't understand. But the truth is that men don't listen. Most of the time when the women are talking to us, our minds are 500 miles away. <clears throat> the solution between not listening and not understanding is quality communication. Where one allows the other to speak and you listen with intention by looking through the eyes and we, the men, listening to our wives, not only the words that they speak, but also the emotion behind the words that they are speaking to us. Let the emotion of your wife touch you. The question is, Pastor, what do I have to share with my spouse 
during courtship and also in the marriage. Eh? <laughs> How do I distinguish, Pastor Kingsley, between secrecy and privacy? Oh, really? Privacy is something you give someone out of respect. Secrecy is something you do withhold from an, the other person. Privacy is when you want to go to the bathroom without your spouse looking. So you lock the door. Or you want to buy your spouse something. You, you want to give that gift to him or her as a surprise. That can be secrecy and that is right. That is privacy, sorry. Secrecy is when you feel guilty about something that you cannot tell your spouse. For couples to be secretive, they also have to be separative. And that is when the light begins to dim. Especially when the secret is catching up with them. The truth about secrecy is that it builds lack of trust and resentment. The truth about life is that we all need little private time to be on our own. Everybody, at least, everybody needs some privacy in every marriage. But privacy is such that it can never be damaging. Privacy is having some quality, quality quiet time with the Lord alone or going on a retreat. Privacy is a withholding of information concerning yourself, the disclosure of which will be of no benefit to the partner and which you do not wish to share. I mean, something when you were growing up that you did which will not affect the marriage, it, it doesn't matter. But secrecy, on the other hand, is withholding information that may have an effect on the well-being of the partner. And there are some things you dare, you dare not keep a secret when you are entering into a marriage or when you, you are married. <laughs> Bad debts. You know that for no fault of your own or also at times because you didn't plan things properly or also at times because of the pressure of life, you find yourself settled with debt on the mountains, in the valley, and in the ocean. When you are going into marriage, let your spouse know that this is my condition. Are you hearing me? Don't let your wife just realize overnight that you are so much settled and deep in depth that there is nothing you can do as a man. If you have spiritual challenges before you enter into the marriage, let your spouse know. You know that you sleep in the night and you are screaming because you are seeing things. <laughs> know that two is better than one. And the two of you have come together so that you can stand and intercede with Christ in the center of that marriage. You can pray, but don't just go and you marry your wife, then in the night a whole man, you are screaming like a baby. If you are not careful, the wife will get up and run for her life. Physical challenges. People growing up because of no fault of their own, they suffered epilepsy. Epilepsy is such that it can pop up any time. Don't ever enter into a marriage. And no member, nobody hearing my voice will have this sickness in the name of Jesus. But even if it does, share that with your spouse. Mental disorder in the past. You know, now it is proven that mental disorder is such that it can be generational. And there are some families, whichever way you look at it, that is a challenge in that family. Mental disorder. And maybe one, when you were in secondary school, one day you just got up and you started running around the school field with probably only your knickers or your boxer shorts on. Till the school security came, held you up, and took you to a psychiatric center. And since then, it has never come back. But 
It is something that runs through the DNA of your family. You must let your spouse know. And the two of you must pray about it that it will never come upon you and it will never come upon your descendants. So that one day, if you just bolt out of the car and start throwing your clothes off, your partner will know the kind of prayer he or she must pray. So that it does not become a surprise to him. Be transparent. Be transparent. You had a child when you were 16 years old. Why should you hide it from your wife? Till one day, you've been supporting this child secretly. Then for, 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 then you just think that, oh, you've had enough. You stopped. Then one day, they carry your son. Then your ex comes with your own child. And any time that happens, it becomes your, 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 your not only your photocopy, but your, your real visible DNA. That's why you can't say it is not you. Because this is your picture. <laughs> so you are looking at the child and you are looking at the woman. And your wife is standing there confused. Dear, what is happening? You ask the lady, lady, what is this? Ask him. <laughs> can't you see you don't have eyes? Unnecessary battle is coming to your house. Something you, just, just a word could have saved you of that embarrassment. Affairs with close friends of your spouse in the past, it will help her understand why they suddenly turn against her. Never enter into a marriage as a man if you have problem with potency. God is a healer, but this one seek healing first before you marry. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know you are not a man. <laughs> Go and marry somebody's daughter. Then on the honeymoon you are giving all kinds of excuses. <laughs> if you are the main breadwinner of your family, let your spouse know. It is not wrong. I was sent to secondary school by my big sister. And it is not wrong if by God's grace, God blesses me and something comes. It is my responsibility to let my wife know that, hey, see, me when I was growing up, because of the challenges in the family, it was my sister. All my nephews and nieces up to date, they call me brother. Because they know I'm their brother. And if God has been gracious to me, it is my responsibility. Not only the immediate children of my sister, but also my other sister's children. And by God's grace, we came together. We have helped two. One is now a medical doctor. And the other is now heading compassion back in Africa. The truth is that you must, you must communicate this well to your partner. The fourth thing I want to talk about is the fuel. Every car runs on energy, either diesel, LPG gas, unleaded, or forced fire. Due to the errand commitments the car is used to make the fuel burns out and one has to refill. You know, I know a marriage where one day the, the, the 11 nieces were lined up and they were sending them to their uncle. And the wife was screaming. Anyway, fuel. The dashboard will always alert you of your fuel level. Some ignore the signs till the car leaves them in the middle of the road. It has happened to me once. It will never happen again. <laughs> this is when you see people with all manner of cars running to buy fuel. It becomes difficult to start many of such cars at that point because death, death fills the fuel pipes. And in those days, I remember the first time I, I, I ran out of fuel. Those were the days the cars used carburetors. Hmm. I don't, it's not a good experience to talk about. 
<laughs> These days I ensure that my car, once it is a quarter full, I run to the nearest station and top it up. Because once beaten, there is no, nothing painful than for your wife to be in your car and your car runs out of fuel. <laughs> because she's your wife, she has nowhere to go. But if you are caught in, it is a good sign that, lady, this man, be careful. A man who can fill his own car with fuel. Be careful where he's taking you. The truth about curves in driving, the reverse we have to make. And at times, driving in low gear, the three point turns, the climbing of hills is such that the fuel burns out and we have to go and refill the car. The challenge of life is that couples burn out. And whichever way we look at it, the challenges of our society, running to work, running after the train, running after the buses, the tension and the pressure at work, coming back home, cooking the routine of life is such that burnout is real. And you see, if you take your car to the filling station, you don't, fuel, you don't fill your car with fuel when the engine is on. What do you do? You turn it off. And also even to make sure that nobody moves your car, you take the key off the ignition and put it in your pocket and fill your car and then you walk to the till and pay for your car. There are some places, the moment you park, there's somebody there to fill the fuel for you. They don't want any trouble. They don't want anybody filling the car and running off. But we live in a country where you fill your fuel, you get down, you go to the till, at times you have to queue to pay. And the same happens in our marriage. Every marriage needs a break. Where the couple will take a break, you pack the routine because physically and mentally you get to a point in your walk of life where you get tired. The truth is that many marriages are suffering because the women are tired. They are tired. And it even makes it more painful if the woman works. She has to get up in the morning and, and with the men, I, no, so that as for TBC men, we are different. Because they get up and make sure that the children are well dressed up, they are well washed, their teeth are well brushed, and they are well dressed up, and the men pack the alpac lunches for them. And the, the TBC men, oh, they are special. They, they, they work and their wives work. They come home early, and they go to the kitchen, and they cook. And when then they tell the wife, oh, take a rest, come on, take... Take the remote and watch your favorite channel. I wish our men do that. You know what they do? The moment they open the door, they walk to the is my food ready? Is my food ready? What did you cook for me today? Eh? But, but you see, marriage should be such that not only are we good friends helping each other, but there must be some richness, trust, and love in the family that you look at your wife, you know your wife is tired. So you say, this weekend, we are going for a break. And you know, the children of this country, they are very, 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 very helpful. They will clean the house for you. They will hoover the house for you. They will wash the dishes for you. They will do every work for you. I wish our children would do that. <laughs> At times, you have to walk up the stairs and pick the spoons and the plates from their bedrooms. When the folks are missing, oh, you go. At times, you look at some of the plates, 
mushrooms have started growing on them. I remember I went on a visitation some time ago. My friend's church, not TBC. Then the mom said, Pastor, you come with me. So we went to. Uh, he took me to the room of this young lady. Hey! The place were growing mushrooms. <laughs> Tell your neighbor the Lord is good. May we plan and give our wives some rest. But the fifth thing I want to, I, I, I won't be able to finish. The fifth thing I want to talk about is the GPS or the Tom Tom. It's your, what, what? Is your GPS functioning in your car? Or is your Tom Tom leading you to rivers of no return? Modern cars are all fitted with quality GPS. Its function is to direct you to your destination. And the interesting thing is that when you get there, it tells you you have arrived at your I don't know who is in there. But the GPS will tell you you have arrived at your destination. The truth about the Holy Spirit is that he guides and he directs our paths. With the GPS, ours is to follow the instruction it gives us. At times, it takes us on longer routes, on a longer route, but if you have no clue where you are going, you better follow the GPS. And most of the time, it warns us in advance, especially when we are about to enter into a double, a, 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 a carriageway or a motorway. It tells you turn round. It tells you left turn coming up, three hundred meters from here. Turn right and keep right. If it tells you keep right and you keep left because you are the best driver, you will find yourself on the M23 instead of the M25. But the truth is that your GPS will tell you. And what the Holy Spirit does is that on the dashboard of our marriages, it warns us of the dangers that are ahead of us. And the purpose of the GPS is to lead us to our destination and the GPS telling us you have arrived at your destination. Your marriage will arrive at its desired destination in the name of Jesus. The truth about the GPS when you are traveling is that you program, you plot it on the car. Where is your marriage going? What is the vision for your marriage and your family? As the prophet, priest, and king of the family, where are you taking the woman and the children? Does a woman see the future? What kind of leadership are you giving to the marriage? Where is the marriage heading? What are you doing with your life? Where do you want to arrive in the next five years? What are the plans for the future? What are the plans for the children? What are the plans after pension? Where do you want to settle? Asia? Africa? The Caribbean? Home here in the United Kingdom, North Africa, North America. What are the plans that will take you there? How are you plotting the GPS on your dashboard? The Holy Spirit will guide your marriage and warn you of any dangers ahead. But you know, at times the GPS gets confused, especially in the city. And any time you have to make a U-turn, you have to. 10, else you are going nowhere. Only last Sunday, celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary, we decided to go to a, a Chinese restaurant. I love Chinese food in the city. Why not? Give ourselves a good treat. And we go to a place, the, the GPS told me to drive to turn right. I went straight. So we hit a stretch of road then the GPS started saying, turn left, turn right, turn left. It got confused. I discovered the only way out of that was to make a U-turn. And in the middle of these buses and taxi, right in the heart of the city. What was the name of that shop? 
uh, suffrages around that area. You know what I did? I turned around. <laughs> I didn't bother what the bus drivers would, would say about me. The truth about life is that if you have to make a U-turn, eh, do it. If you make a U-turn before your wife and children, what's the big deal? And if you make a decision, and you know that decision is taking the family nowhere, and you have to make a U-turn, my goodness, it is your own sweetheart and your own children. What should make you macho about this and keep on, and you know you are going nowhere. But at times our ego is such that <sighs> and we do that till one day we come home and we meet an empty house. Because the marriage is going nowhere. You see, nobody tells me the truth the way it should be said than my wife. Truth can hurt but truth delivers and truth is helpful. And she says it so graciously. But at times I'm saying to myself, ah, yeah. And many of we men, and at times the men of color, eh, this one, they saw men. At times we just think that because women's a woman's position is to submit and at times to be second class. When they give advice, we don't even want to take it. And now I'm telling you that we would have saved ourselves from so many disasters because God has gifted women with intuition. Oh, it's a gift. And many of us, if we are listening to them, <laughs> we wouldn't be where we are today. And understand that nobody will give you a better advice than your beloved wife. Because she loves you and she cares for you. And you are in this journey together in the name of Jesus. At times, we become so petty when they give advice. Because we don't want to take the advice, we become petty. Just because the woman made a suggestion. And because we don't want to take it, we become petty. We take the family album. Why is this picture in this album? <laughs> I don't want this picture in the family album. We make a big deal out of nothing. Time is not on my side. But I tell your neighbor, it is well. well. Come and say it again, it is well. well. I will jump to the end. The dashboard, number nine. The beauty, I will, I will, those that I was unable to do, I will do them again, don't worry. The beauty of your dashboard, wow. Can you imagine a car without a dashboard? All these wires will be hanging in the car. There will be no beauty in the car. There will be nothing desir desirable in the car. The beauty about the dashboard is that it beautifies the cars. It satisfies you when you sit in front of that steering wheel. In marriage, this is called romance. And you must keep it alive. It does not matter how old the car is. Your dashboard must look good. Stay attractive and neat for one another. And I pray that may every marriage hearing my voice today attain its potential to the glory, the honor, and the beauty of the Lord. No marriage will break in the name of Jesus because we will pay heed to the warnings on our dashboards in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people shall say, Amen. Amen.